Good morning, selamat pagi, uh, Honorable Trade Minister of Indonesia, Minister Engar, uh, Honorable Ministers, uh, Ambassadors, uh, Honorable Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, uh, welcome to the 33rd Trade Expo Indonesia. Um, I apologize that I'm not able to attend in person this year, uh, but thank you all for the opportunity to share a few thoughts uh, using this uh, brief video uh, and uh, my deputy from BKPM will carry on with the question and answer after my brief presentation. I think uh, the theme that I was asked to discuss uh, this morning uh, was our strategy to boost uh, the economy via uh, increases in export and investment. Um, I like to say that exports uh, always starts first with investment because you need investment to build factories and those factories then manufacture products and those products then can be exported, right? Or investment builds hotel and resort, uh, which then can accommodate tourists, leading to tourism, which itself is a service export. Now, um, the second thing is uh, today's panels or series of panels is on the concept of trade, tourism and investment or TTI. Now, actually, uh, you could almost divide the world into two schools of thought. Uh, there's people who really believe in this TTI concept and frankly there's people who are more skeptical whether there really is a relationship between trade, tourism and investment. Now I can tell you that uh, I firmly belong in the camp that believes strongly in this TTI or trade, tourism, investment concept. Um, and I think uh, we only need to look at um, a couple of events that took place in Indonesia in the last few weeks. Uh, one is the Asian Games in Jakarta and Palembang and uh, the other one is the IMF World Bank meetings in Bali. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that the spectacular uh, Asian Games and the very successful IMF World Bank Bali meetings uh, made a very significant contribution to the world's perception of Indonesia, uh, which then I sincerely believe uh, creates a benefit for people's desire to travel to Indonesia, to visit our country, uh, creates a uh, favorable uh, uh, brand image uh, that spills over to Indonesian goods uh, wherever people might encounter them uh, around the world. Now, uh, the other thing that I would uh, follow from this point is uh, it continues to, to be the case that in my view the two current hotspots for investment, uh, specifically where it pertains to uh, boosting our exports or our hard currency revenues and our tourism. Uh, number one is definitely the tourism lifestyle sector. Um, as President Jokowi has said, uh, the uh, continuing rise of hundreds of millions of people in China, India, Southeast Asia into the global middle class uh, is a historic development. Um, and as President Jokowi points out, what differentiates the middle class from what they were before uh, is one thing and that's lifestyle. Uh, clearly a major part of middle class lifestyle is travel. Uh, global growth is around 3.5%, global economic growth. The global tourism growth is about 7%. Uh, so same as in ASEAN, about double uh, GDP growth. Now we also see this trend very, very strongly in uh, tourism investment. Uh, international investment into our tourism sector is growing in line with our 
robustly growing tourism arrivals. So in 2017, um, our international tourist arrivals grew about 22% year on year. Uh, international investment into the tourism sector or tourism industry grew 47% year on year, according to our data. Now, tourism and lifestyle also happens to be something that uh, I believe uh, we Indonesians are particularly good at. Um, aside from being a tropical island paradise, uh, we have rich traditions with culinary, uh, fashions, handicrafts, um, you know, entertainment, uh, and, uh, and uh, now with these uh, hundreds of millions of rising middle classes, uh, I believe the moment has truly arrived for uh, significant increases in volume uh, of uh, trade and tourism and investment into the lifestyle sector and the tourism sector. Now, the second major trend uh, which is booming in Indonesia aside from the tourism lifestyle sector is clearly e-commerce. Um, and again, this is a fairly recent phenomenon. Um, in just the last four years, really, uh, I believe that uh, uh, international investment into our e-commerce sector and our digital economy uh, has gone from close to zero or very little to today being between 15 and 20 percent of our entire uh, annual FDI. Um, in Indonesia we have as many unicorns now or startups with one billion US dollar or higher valuation uh, as, as there are in the entire European Union um, and uh, notwithstanding the recent stock market turbulence uh, and the correction in uh, technology stock prices uh, I believe this trend is here to stay. Now what makes Indonesia such a hot destination for e-commerce investment clearly is the very large market that we have and more importantly the very large base of internet users that we have um, in just the last five years, the number of internet users in Indonesia jumped from uh, around 40 million users uh, in 2013 uh, to around 120 million internet users uh, today, five years later. Uh, and this number will continue to rise to around 140 to 150 million internet users by 2020. In line with, the, uh, with this huge base of internet users uh, and frankly with the uh, arrival of uh, social media uh, we've also seen an explosion in uh, online transactions uh, online retail uh, online travel booking uh, online uh, buying and selling uh, here we see uh, a few numbers uh, we estimate that uh, the amount of retail transactions online has gone from 8 billion US dollars five years ago to about 20 billion dollars in the last couple of years uh, and the trend continues to be very robust so we expect the total value of online retail to reach around 130 billion US dollars uh, by 2020. Now retail is only one aspect of the digital economy uh, obviously uh, as the volume of online retail grows uh, the demand for online payments uh, is also growing explosively and frankly on the back of online payments always comes uh, online financial services. So fintech is another booming uh, segment or aspect of our e-commerce and digital economy boom um, and uh, right now we think that uh, the total uh, volume of fintech transactions in Indonesia is in the order of 14 to 15 billion US dollars per year. Now the e-commerce boom started with uh, online retailing, uh, people ordering goods and then uh, pulled in demand for online payment solutions but it was very quickly followed by uh, online services uh, or uh, at a minimum online ordering of services. So obviously uh, some of our most famous unicorns include companies like Gojek uh, and Grab. What I see as even more powerful is the convergence of these two trends. The era of middle-class lifestyle and tourism and travel 
and e-commerce and digital platforms and digital delivery channels. So the main, the main conclusion I would leave you with is that I think uh, over the next few years, whether you are uh, a buyer uh, of products and services in Indonesia, uh, whether you are a seller, an exporter or an importer, uh, you can count on uh, more and more choices of digital platforms, of digital channels, uh, and certainly I would strongly encourage you to engage uh, proactively and deeply with the e-commerce startups, the e-commerce platforms uh, such as Alibaba, uh, such as Amazon, uh, but also the social media platforms and the uh, incredible number of startups uh, and, uh, and tech companies uh, who are uh, bringing uh, goods and services uh, to Indonesian consumers and Indonesian products and services to, to consumers around the world. Now, these powerful trends and market realities also have implications for our regulatory strategy, right? Um, just last week at the IMF World Bank Bali meetings, President Jokowi uh, emphasized that our regulatory approach to digital economy and to e-commerce will be light touch and uh, what's called safe harbor, essentially protecting people from uh, experiments that fail uh, because as President Jokowi has said, uh, innovation comes from experimentation and experiments by nature fail. Uh, so we have to make it safe for entrepreneurs and innovators to fail uh, and not be afraid to experiment. Uh, similarly, on uh, our regulation and policy uh, for tourism, um, frankly, uh, our tourism boom today is thanks in no small part, you know, it's thanks to a significant extent to President Jokowi's decision uh, in the first year of his five-year term to make 170 countries uh, visa-free. Uh, so visitors from 170 countries uh, can come to Indonesia uh, and process visa on arrival. Uh, so these are just examples of the strategy on regulation and policy, uh, which uh, I can assure you are heavily geared towards uh, supporting the uh, boom in e-commerce, in uh, digital uh, platforms, and in uh, tourism and lifestyle. So that's uh, all I can share uh, on this uh, good occasion. Um, I hope these are helpful insights into what is currently powering uh, trade, tourism, and uh, investment in Indonesia. Uh, and I wish you all a productive and uh, insightful conference. Thank you very much.